Uh, I'm aware that here in Ireland, um, the recent um, case brought by friends of the Irish environment um, didn't get anywhere. I can't uh, resist making some brief observations on that case. Uh, I think it was extremely disappointing for a case to be, but this is very classic, of course, any of us who are uh, students of, uh, of judgments know this well, um, to lay out a groundwork which is extremely progressive, uh, to adopt a very positive approach on standing, uh, to adopt a very open approach to the existence of um, a, an unenumerated right to environment uh, with human dignity uh, and so on. But then to simply conclude, in essence, by saying that this is a matter to which we must defer to the government. I see very little point in acknowledging um, standing and then the existence of a right to an environment if the courts are not prepared to take those seriously. Now, I acknowledge, because I've been involved in the field of economic and social rights for a long time, that there are strong resistances, and I certainly know that in Ireland, but in many other countries, to courts getting involved in what are legitimately seen as the uh, redistributive um, responsibilities of the government, of the executive branch and of the parliament. Um, but I think one has to ask in a case like this, is there no limit? In other words, if the government were to say, actually, we now think climate change is a hoax, and there are a number of governments around the world saying that, and we are going to abandon the goals. Where does the deference stop? And how do we draw the line between complete abandonment, which might seem a bit easier, and reacting not at all to a very significant downgrading of the measures that governments are going to take. Um, I could go on. I think the court's reliance on uh, the doctrine of deference, which they then equated to the margin of appreciation, is deeply problematic. Uh, I think the fact that they pointed to the fact that the European Court of Human Rights hasn't acted specifically uh, they're right, but that shouldn't in fact stop uh, the courts at the national level from nonetheless considering these issues. Uh, they might have noted that the Inter-American Court of Human Rights, maybe that's simply too far away from here, um, has adopted a very strong and progressive approach um, on uh, the right to environment and linking that to action taken by governments on climate change. Let me just finish then by saying my bottom line is that climate change is a matter for all of us, that we cannot leave it to others. And no matter where we stand or sit, we need to think what can we do. Now, it's going to be different. There are going to be great constraints on judges. There are going to be great constraints on various people. But I've always believed in my own career that there are opportunities for pushing the margins. And those who don't push when the opportunities are there, those who don't draw attention to issues, even if that's difficult, are opting out. And I genuinely don't believe that's any longer an option in relation to climate change. Thank you.